Okay, here we want to solve this equation, okay? Uh, don't worry about the fact that here is lowercase and prime of t is equal to alpha n of t, and here is, uh, uh, sorry, uppercase, and this is lowercase. And it is the same. Here with the lowercase, I denoted the solution, okay? Solution is any function that plugged into the equation gives an identity. This is the idea for every t, for every t in some interval to be specified. I will be much more specific when I will give you the, the true definitions about, uh, about the differential equations, but up to now, let me be uh, intuitive. I really aim at giving you the flavor of the differential equation. However, so now, this differential equation can be summarized into the following question. So the question is, Which function, when differentiated, gives results in itself, itself, but just multiplied by a real number alpha. This is the, the true question. Okay? We are looking, we are seeking for functions such that when we differentiate them, we find the same function times alpha, times a quantity alpha. Okay, you know that uh, if you consider e to the power t, you differentiate this and it does not change. In order to gain a factor alpha, just put the same factor in front of the variable e to the alpha t. Okay? So n of t equal to e to the alpha t solves the equation, double asterisk, for every t in R. If you don't believe it, just verify it indeed m prime of t is equal to the same exponential e to the alpha t times alpha, and this is alpha n of t for every t in R. Hmm? And, uh, okay, e to the alpha t is not the same function because you know, for instance, that if you multiply a function by a constant, then when you differentiate it, the constant remains there, harmless, just multiplying the derivative. So, moreover, if you consider any c in R, and the function n of t equal to c e to the alpha t, then what you have is n prime of t, is equal to c times alpha e to the alpha t, which is alpha n of t. So notice that here we found infinitely many solutions. We will prove that these are the only solutions of the equation. There are no other solutions. Okay. Uh, however, now let us reason a bit on the fact that there are infinitely many solutions. They seem to be a bit too much. Why? Because I'm working on a model that is able, that must be able to give predictions on the future. So this is not good, apparently. This is not good for a mathematical model aimed at giving predictions.
for natural phenomena. Because natural phenomena, or just the number of inhabitants of a certain region of a bacteria in my laboratory, and so on and so on, are unique. At time t, the population is, I don't know, 60 million for, for Italy and so on. It is not possible to have infinitely many answers. Okay? So a certain phenomenon has only one measure, one size. at a given time. So, the solution for a given moment should, should be unique and should exist too. So, What is the problem with Malthus model? I am able to, to, to convey the question. The question is that we have too many answers. We have infinitely many answers. Any number is good to foresee the population at time, I don't know, this year, 2020. So what is the problem with Malthus model? So in order to understand, let us rephrase to understand this. Let us rephrase the question related to Malthus equation. Let us just rephrase it. Hmm. The question can be rephrased uh, in, uh, in terms of uh, an investment, of a bank investment. So, let us say, for instance, I, I invest, or better, today, I invest all my money in a financial product horrible in a financial product that guarantees an interest rate and I, let me say, a yearly interest rate of, uh, for instance, of the 2%. Okay? So, the question is, how much money will I possess next year. So this is the problem. I read you again the problem. Today I invest all my money in a financial product, horrible, that guarantees a nearly interest rate of 2%. How much money will I possess next year? This is the, the question, and you see that this problem is underdetermined. There is a, a data missing here. There is an information here. The missing information is How much 
money I am investing now. Is it clear? If I invest zero with an interest rate of 2%, I will obtain zero. If I invest one euro with the same interest rate, at the end of the year, I will gain one euro and two cents. If I invest one billion euros, at the end I will have one billion and I will say 20 million. Okay? So if I don't, if I don't say, if I don't know how much money do I have at the beginning, I cannot compute how much money I will have in one year. So, and in the PD, sorry, in the ODA language, What is missing is the initial condition or initial datum. Which is also named as initial data. This is what is missing. And without this information, we cannot say anything. So, so reformulation of the Malthus problem. The following today which is t equal t naught the population and t naught amounts to n naught in other words the function n Computed at t naught is equal to some value and not. One billion, one, zero, whatever you want. So, the differential equation that describes the evolution of the population is n prime sometimes you don't put t in the equation n prime is equal to alpha n okay so what will be the population at time t1 this is the question so let us solve this problem. And the solution is the following. The, sorry, the differential equation M prime equal a n has infinitely many solutions. Namely, n of t is equal to c e to the power alpha t. Okay? c can be any real number, also negative. Then in the model, we are interested in non-negative solution because we are counting people. So, we don't have negative people. Okay, yes, we have negative people, but for the purpose, for the purpose of counting, they are positive. Okay? Oh, very bad, the negative and positive in these days of coronavirus. So cancel this, very, very horrible. What I said, I was thinking about negative like bad and positive like good, but now it is the contrary from some point of view. 
So, go back. Solution. The OD n prime equal to alpha n has infinitely many solutions. n of t is equal to c e to the alpha t. Okay? Infinitely many solutions. Now, moreover, we know we are using the initial condition or initial data. that n of t naught is equal to n naught, but n of t naught is c e to the alpha t naught. So, equaling the first and the third member of the equality, we find that c is equal to n naught e to the alpha t naught which is a precise value, okay? So, if you just look at the differential equation here, C can be any real number, so you are left with infinitely many solutions. But after imposing, after, after taking into account the initial condition, you are reduced to only one value of C. And this is the trick. This is all you have to, to understand now. Okay, which is one specific value. Therefore, the evolution of the population is described by the function n of t, oh sorry, n minus, here there is a minus, n of t is equal to n naught e to the alpha t minus t naught. Okay, just using this value of c. You plug c here and we obtain this, this result. Then, at time T1, the population, will be n of T1 is equal to n naught e to the alpha T1 minus T0. Okay? And uh, notice what is important here. Important fact is that here, when we single out uh, the solution which is interesting for our problem, the solution is unique, okay? So, after imposing the boundary condition, sorry, the initial condition, which is a sort of boundary condition too, but we will talk about boundary conditions in physics too, when doing electromagnetism in particular electrostatic theory. After imposing the initial condition, the solution n of t is uni uniquely determined. So let me here write down the First important remark, that generalizes our case, we use the very simple differential equation, but here I want to say that in general, a differential equation has infinitely many solutions but the initial condition selects if it is a uh, well-given initial condition selects 
only one. And uh, let me add, let me be pedantic, but and exactly one. One function in the set of the solutions of the ODE. Okay, and this is what makes the model predictive and useful. Otherwise, it is completely useless. You cannot extract any reasonable prediction from a model that gives you infinitely many solutions. Okay, this is very important to, to understand. And so, let me, be, let me insist on that and be schematic. So, you have an ODE, and then infinitely many solutions. This is different from normal equations. Second degree equation have two solutions, an ODE, if it, if it is not really very pathologic, so generically, an ODE has always infinitely many solutions. But an ODE plus initial condition that is called, as we will see, a Cauchy problem, This has only one solution. Which is extracted, ex extracted from, from this set. Okay. Now let me go back to the model and see what, uh, what Malthus uh, can say about... Uh, about all this and uh, so in general we have uh, so we, we we want to discuss a bit the qualitative behavior of the solutions to Malthus equation <clears throat> so here we have uh, First, this behavior, this is for alpha larger than zero, so we have an c larger than zero, we have m of t equal to c e to the alpha t. This is uh, what really Malthus was caring about, the fact that uh, if alpha larger than zero, and of course c larger than zero, we have exponential growth. You see that exponential growth arises from this sort of very simple differential equations. Linear differential equation, first order suffices in order to have this really monstrous exponential growth, like in the first phase of a pandemic wave. This is really impressive, in my opinion. Really scary. 
Okay, and then you have nt equal to zero, and this is quite easy to be discussed. There is no one, so no one dies, and no one can uh, get alive, and so on and so on. And then we have also n of t negative, and this is like a mirrored solution. So, okay. And now there is also the possibility of having alpha less than zero. Alpha less than zero gives you this behavior. Alpha less than zero and c larger than zero. You here you experience the so-called exponential decrease. Which is a quite a slow way of decreasing like that. Okay, not so slow, but the polynomial is slower. Okay. So as a conclusion I can say that Malthus was scared about exponential increase, which is very fast. At every year, the population was multiplied by the same factor, the same factor e to the alpha larger than 1. leading to a, an uncontrolled, uncontrollable group. This uncontrollable is uh, very important. Uncontrollable in many, in many fields is a sort of synonymous of exponential, but did you have seen with the pandemic? In this pandemic, there is a lot of learn about mathematics. Epidemiology is mainly mathematics, it's not virology, it's not medicine, it's mainly mathematics. And so you see that at the beginning of the pandemic, numbers were very low. So last uh, summer, summer 2020, is like two deaths people every day. So people were claiming car accidents are much more dangerous. Of course, but car accidents are not contagious. They do not give a rise to an exponential growth. The problem was that starting with this few new infections per day, like 10, 20, through the exponential growth, every week they were multiplied by a factor. At some point, October, November 2020, every week they were doubling. And this is enormous. This is really enormous. In March, they were doubling every two days. This was really incredible. Okay, and you will see that very soon, it was impossible to take care of all of these people. This is the power, the scaring power of the exponential growth. So Malthus was right, was right in some sense. He was scared about exponential increases, so at every year the population was multiplied by the same factor, e to the alpha larger than 1, leading to an uncontrollable growth, and sooner or later... But he believed very soon... the food would be exhausted, would be finished, I don't know, would be at the end. And so, and this is also the end of this part, but we say that uh, it was uh, there was a, a way to to escape from this Malthus trap. And the way was uh, illustrated by Ferhalst, but before going to Ferhalst, I want to, to give you another, another example, and this will be done in the next lecture.